midway between the half forward line and centre line for East Fremantle. Emery and Mycock going for the knock. Players are pretty tired. No one can get in and pick it up. And umpire Montgomery decides to have a bounce down. There's the bounce again. Mycock going high. Here's Thornley forcing his way over the half forward line. He's chased by Fairbrass up to the full forward pocket. And again, McIntosh takes the mark. Well, what a great finish for a grand final. Can't get it much closer. One point the difference in favour of East Fremantle. There goes the kick. Fairclay tries to break away. Daryl Cormack goes down. Tripped the decision from umpire Montgomery. And Daryl Cormack has the kick on the right centre wing. A lot of players gathered around the half forward line for East Fremantle as Cormack sends the ball down towards full forward. Almost to Mark Delally, taken now by Smart. He's in big trouble. Picked up by McIntosh. He's in trouble too. The whistle sounds and we'll see a bounce down again there in the right full forward pocket for East Fremantle. There's messages going out all over the ground from trainers as we await this bounce down. Game couldn't be more tense. Regan's gone into the centre now. Michael Regan in the centre. There's the bounce down in the back pocket. Taken by Emery. Here's Rogers bringing it away for Claremont. Pulled off the kick by Trizzy Lawrence. Trizzy Lawrence picks it up. There goes the snap. Away to the right. Greve is there for Claremont. It's out of bounds. Glides with two little boys, if you don't mind, coming on to uh, intercept it. And we'll see a throw in in the right full forward pocket for East Fremantle. But 25 minutes into the final quarter. One point the difference. There's a mighty knock from Johnson a point. and forces the ball through for each Mantle for a valuable point. 14 goals, 8, 92. 12 goals, 18, 90. There's John Greaves into play, looking for Erwin Lewis and finding that player. Erwin Lewis came onto the ground as a reserve. Oh, bad kick from Lewis, right in the arms of Barry Biffin. There's Biffin looking for Lawrence. John Rogers is there. Lawrence number 2, Rogers 18. He's in the full forward pocket. And snaps and it's out of bounds from the left full forward pocket for the East Fremantle side. We might get the official time from the timekeepers uh, if we can keep our eye open up there. There's the throw in. Johnson has come on the ball with McIntosh. It's in the full forward pocket for East Fremantle. There's Thornley bursting his way through. And a beautiful piece of work by Bert Thornley. Came well down, get his left foot to the ball and put that through for six points to the East Fremantle side, a very valuable goal. Mike Regan. 15 goals, 8, 98. 12 goals, 18, 90. About 26 minutes into this final quarter. McIntosh number one on the ball for Claremont. Dave Emery, 22. Oh, and Emery's knocked to half forward. Kevin Clune, number six. Claremont fighting back. There goes Clunes, kick towards half forward. Deathridge there. Number seven. Kicked up towards Harvey and Regan. And Con Regan. Bustling with Harvey, comes out and takes a safe mark in the East Fremantle defence. Well, as coaches, committee men, trainers all around the ground urging their respective sides what to do. And there goes Regan's kick. Out towards the half back line. Nation 14. Kicks the ball back into play. Biffin number seven, a good mark to Barry Biffin. <coughs> and Biffin takes the mark with 27 minutes, two minutes into time on. Barry Biffin taking the mark on the left half back flank. There's a big pack of players. It's in the centre wing position now. John Rogers, well up from his position. John Fairbrass in the centre of the ground. Over to Brian Fairclough, the racehorse. And there goes his left foot kick. Up towards the half forward line. John Parkinson. But there's the many East Fremantle play. Now he's taken it away again. Well done, John Parkinson. Up to the white square. And there's Ian Brewer who puts it through. Well, what a game. What a fight here at Subiaco Oval. 92 points to 98. And what do you think from here, Mick Cronin? Well, it looks anybody's game from here. Claremont are fighting back in an admirable spirit. There's no doubt about it. They're right. They looked as if they were gone, but they've come right back. East Fremantle have players down everywhere. Trudy Lawrence has given instructions. Young Emery's on the ball. And here it is, back with umpire Montgomery for this final throwdown. 
Well, we're three minutes into the time on period. There must be about three or four minutes to go. Two points the difference in favour of the blue and whites. And everybody's in the centre on the ball. Trizzy Lawrence down towards the half forward line. Here's John Greve, first in the race of the ball. Taking the kick at right half back. There goes his kick up towards the centre wing. John McIntosh there with Banks. John McIntosh with the ball over to Les Mummy. He's at half forward. There goes the kick into centre half forward. A Terry O'Brien judging the ball expertly there, taking the mark in the centre half back position. Well, a lucky kick going either way could win this premiership. A little bit of luck helps a lot in these final few minutes as players are very tired and very sore. Terry O'Brien taking his time. There goes his kick out towards the wing. John Rogers, 18, and Trizzy Lawrence, number two. Fairbrass, 23. Out on the wing now to Karen Gard. Looking for Lewis further afield, but out of bounds in the right half forward position, and we're four minutes into time on. Do you think East Fremantle can hang on, Steve Marsh? I think so. I think they can do it. It's, uh, it's been a very good game of football here this afternoon, and Claremont, well, either side would be very unlucky to lose. Well, Steve here, Marsh coached the last East Fremantle side, the Premiers, and there it is on the half, half forward line for Claremont. They're not giving in. Michael Regan down towards the centre position. John Fairbrass, 23. He's over the centre line now, having a kick towards the half forward line. Brian Finney, Dale Edwards, number eight, is it? A kick in towards full forward, and it's Ian Brewer. Ian Brewer taking the mark in the left full forward pocket. Tell you what, Bob, I could be wrong. <laughs> He'd be about uh, 30 yards out on a very acute angle. There's a kick, and it's through. Through the full point for the Tigers. Well, what a game, what a finish. There was no need for the goal umpire. The crowd went up. What's the scoreboard read, Brian? I can't even see it. They <laughs> can't work it out. It's 14-18, Bob. 14-18, Claremont. 102 points to Claremont. 98 points to East Mantle. Four points in favour of the Tigers, and we're five minutes into the time on period. Listen to the crowd. They're going mad here at Sibiaco Oval. Claremont have come back to take over the lead once again. The punch down in the centre circle. There it goes. Mycock going high, Regan bringing it away for East Fremantle towards the half-forward line. Fred Lewis marks it for East Fremantle at centre-half forward. What a beautiful mark to Fred Lewis. Well, you couldn't get things any closer or more exciting here in the grand final. Claremont holding a very, very slender lead. There goes the kick from Lewis. Right up towards full forward it goes. There's a roar from the crowd, they're fighting on the edge of the square. Umpire Montgomery comes over and we'll see a bounce down there. A bounce down on the edge of the East Fremantle goal square. Four points the difference in favour of the Claremont Tigers. Only seconds to go. Racing at centre half back, Emery is there, picks it up for East Fremantle. He's pulled off the kick, look at them fight for it. Picked up now by Darrell Cormack. Cormack trying to get into the clear. Whistle sounds again. Ten seconds. Ten, Ten seconds, seconds to go. go from the timekeepers, and the atmosphere is absolutely electric. There goes the bounce down. Banks gets the knockdown. Picked up by Thornley. There goes the siren. It's all over. It's the Claremont Grand Final in 1964. And look at the players on their knees there, praying. Well, what a finish, what a performance. You couldn't get any better anywhere. Well, what a magnificent finish. We couldn't have had it any better if we'd written the script, Mick Cranham. Uh, <laughs> that's marvellous. I, I must admit, I thought that East Fremantle were, were good things. But I will take my hat off to Claremont. They were in, the, in trouble and came back magnificently.